Cool. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. That's great. <laughs> oh, I haven't done that before. That was exciting. Um, cool. OK, thanks for doing that. We'll go ahead and get started. OK, so equipment that you're going to need today is same, same as we've been doing, um, a letter ball of some sort. So as just as a reminder, this is just a, a big rubber ball with um, letters, an even number of letters and numbers on it. You could also have a tennis ball. I alternate back and forth. And then uh, if you don't have a letter ball, you could do like a rolled up pair of socks, something that's interesting for your eye to look at or even a rag, something with an interesting pattern, um, a pair of mittens, whatever you've got. And then second thing you're gonna need is just uh, two pencils or two cooking utensils or your thumbs if that's easier for you. Um, just something that's easy for you to hold and do some of the visual work with. And then as always, especially because this class incorporates some uh, visual and vestibular work, when we do get into that, into that side of things, just being mindful that you're taking care of yourself. Um, it's okay to feel dizzy, nauseous, tired eyes, watery eyes, but that means that you've met your edge. So once you feel any of those sensations, go ahead and back off, take a break. You can close your eyes, grab some water, anything that feels good. Uh, so just, just listening to your body. Okay, so we'll go ahead and come back to a seated or standing grounding position of some sort. And feel free to slip. I know it's chilly this morning, at least if you're in the Bay Area, but uh, feel free to slip off socks and shoes if that is accessible and or safe for you to do so. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close the eyes. And just coming into your breath. Maybe noticing if you can hear your breath, how loud or quiet it is. And then if you're able to, trying to slow that breath down and trying to quiet that breath. So if somebody were sitting next to you, could they hear you breathe? And just feeling yourself being supported by either the chair or the floor underneath you. And then we're gonna do a body scan today, but I wanna focus more on the back side of your body. So starting from your feet and moving all the way through your toes and just noticing any sensations, anything that's going on more on the back side of your body. So how does the back of your neck and back of your head feel? The backs of your shoulders, maybe even the backs of your arms. And then working down your spine. And are there certain parts of your back that you can sense that you can feel more? Maybe you feel the upper back more than the lower back or vice versa. Can you feel your hips, your butt, the backs of your legs, behind your knees, your calves? The bottoms of your feet. And then go ahead and just set an intention for class today. That could be as general or specific as you'd like. We'll take one more inhale, one more exhale, and we'll open the eyes. Okay. We're gonna open the arms up behind us like we're getting ready to give someone a really huge hug. And I just want you to hold that position there. So chest is forward. And I want you to pull your wrists and your fingers, if you're able to pull your fingers back behind you. And I want you to hold that as you move the wrist forward and back. So my thumb is pointing up towards the sky and I'm just moving my wrist forward and back. This is something called nerve flossing, can help free up some tension in our forearms and up through our shoulders. Yep. 
good. Then I want you to give yourself a really big hug and round your upper back, burying your head between your arms. Good, go ahead and open again. Look up at the ceiling, find that wrist movement forward and back again, maybe just four or five times. And a little nerve flossing and then switch the direction your arms are crossed to give yourself a hug and round forward. Good, open. Now this time I want your wrist to go up and down instead of forward back. So my palms are facing down and I'm moving my ribs, wrists up and down. Really focusing on pulling the wrists up. All the way from the thumbs. Yep, good. And then switch the cross of your arms and give yourself a hug. Good, one more time. Open the arms, open the chest. Find the wrists going up and down again. Mm -hmm. And then give yourself a hug. Okay, good. Go ahead and shake out the arms kind of aggressively, like you're trying to get all of that water off. You can shake out the legs if you're standing. All right, and then we're gonna to come to our scalp massage here. So using your fingers or your knuckles and just giving your whole head a really nice scratch. And if you wanna change it today, you can even use, again, knuckles or the pads of your fingers to do more of a massaging movement where I'm trying to move the skin on my scalp around. And you might notice that some areas of your scalp move a little bit more as opposed to other areas. If you wear a ponytail all the time, or if you position your hair in a certain way all the time, you might find your head is stiff where, you're, where that ponytail or bun or whatever sits on your head. So just kind of a good thing to notice, because remember we have fascia, we have connective tissue that goes all the way up and over all our scalp. So sometimes this can also help with headaches, it can help with eye tension, especially if you're staring at a screen all day. Yeah, okay, and then go and release that. And just kind of notice how the head Maybe even how the neck feels. Sometimes that can help release some tension in the neck. And I'm gonna have you take your knuckles or thumbs, I'm gonna show you the back of my head, and put them right at the base of your skull. And I want you to you again, using your knuckles or thumb, just to do a really mini circular massage in that area. And as you do this, you can even move your head around. You can move the head up and down. You can turn the head left and right. Some of you might even notice that that area is really tender. You can also find a drag of your knuckles going from the bottom up to the base of your skull. It's just a small drag. I may be dragging my thumbs an inch or so. And then I want you to lean your head back and look up. So taking some tension, do the same thing, rubbing those muscles. So you felt where those muscles are. Now you're giving those a rub. Yeah, and then go ahead and release that. Yeah, and then just do a few head turns side to side. I'm just noticing if anything changed there for you. Do a few head nods up and down. Yeah, and just noticing if there's a change. Okay, grabbing, I'm gonna put headphones on my head. So grabbing your ear lobes and go ahead and just find kind of a gentle tug forward and down, back and down, forward, down, back and down. So I'm rocking my ear lobes forward and back. Kind of like rocking a boat forward and back. Yeah, you can use your knuckles too. And then grabbing or pulling from your knuckles the tops of your ears and pulling your ears, same thing, up and back, forward and up. Up and back, up and forward. 
up and back, up and forward. If grip is hard for you, you could also just use your knuckles to push your ears in that same direction if you're unable to, to um, grab the tops of your ears. Yeah, okay. And then relax and then take your, here, take your hands. I have to take my headphones off. Find a cupping of your hands over your ears like you're listening to the beach. And then just move your hands in a gentle circle. Yeah. So this, all of this stuff helps calm the nervous system and helps wake up all of those cranial nerves. Okay, go ahead and relax. One more thing for the face here. Actually, two more things. Taking your knuckles, and we're gonna drag the knuckles from the top of the cheekbones down to the bottom of the jaw. Okay, as you do this, I want you to make a sound and I want you to let your jaw go slack. So it might sound something like this. Oh, it could be any sound you want. Oh, uh -huh. so just kind of letting everything release through the jaw, through the neck, through the throat. It could be an E. <laughs> it, you could hum a song. Uh, it could be a note. Uh, yeah, just do one more. Eek, and down. Okay, good. Relax. Shake out the hands. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to grab the back. Actually, I'll stay. I'm just going to stay in towards the camera. Okay, we're going to grab the back of the neck knuckles or ha hands looking down at your belly button. As you drag the hands forward, look up to the sky. My fingers or my knuckles will end at the, um, at the base of my collarbones. Grab the back of the neck, look down, pull and look up. Grab the back of the neck, look down, pull and look up. So you're following one of your major neck muscles as you do this. It's called your SCM, sternocleidomastoid. And we're just tracing that muscle all the way down. Noticing if one side is a little more tense than the other. Just do that one more time. Yeah, and then relax. Awesome. Okay, so go ahead and uh, take both, oops, sorry, I keep hitting my mic. Um, take both hands or both knuckles, and I want those hands to come to uh, your left collarbone and pull the skin down just under that left collarbone. This is really gentle. This is like the amount of pressure I use to test an avocado to see if it's ripe. This isn't too much pressure. So as you pull down, I'm gonna have you tilt your head to the right. And then release. Yep, pull that skin down, tilt your head right, and release. And just keep moving through that. I usually feel this one all the way up in and up to my ear, maybe even up to the top of my head. So you can also play with the angle that you're tilting your head at. Go ahead and switch directions. Pulling and tilting. Pulling and tilting. Mm -hmm. Just do a couple more like that. Good, and then relax, awesome. Okay, let's find our body tapping. So we're just gonna tap going down the outside of the arm and then coming up the inside of the arm. Do that a few times on each side. Remember it could be a rub, a tap. You could do a karate chop. Just whatever feels good to wake up that body. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do the other side. Same pattern, moving down the outside of the arm. 
and up the inside. How do the two sides feel relative to each other? How does your tissue feel this morning? Okay, good. Go ahead and just bring that right down into your legs, moving down the outside of the legs, and then up the inside of the legs. We're gonna get the feet after we do this, so you don't necessarily have to hit the feet on this one. If it's hard for you to get all the way down to your ankles, you can just focus on your upper legs, working on your quads and the outside of your hips. Just doing that a few times through, making sure you get the tops of your legs. And then I want you to get in that area, if you can reach it, either under your thighs or behind your knees. If you can reach behind your knees, give that area a little bit of love. That's also a nice sensitive area for us, uh, whether you have sensation there or not. You've got a lot of things running through that area. Okay, let's come to the feet or the lower legs. If you're able to reach your feet and if you have shoes off, I'm just gonna have you go right into toe weaving where you're weaving your fingers through your toes. If that's not accessible for you, you can just rub each toe or give each toe a twist like a bottle cap. Um, if that's not accessible for you, I'm gonna have you stay on the lower leg, rubbing, dragging your knuckles up from your ankle up to your knee. Find that drag from the bottom to the top. So we push some of that stagnant fluid up and out. And if that still isn't super accessible, then you can do that same movement of dragging your knuckles, but we can do it from the knee to the hip. Okay, so whatever you can reach, whatever you have access to there, whether that's the foot, the lower leg or the upper leg, just waking that area up. You can dig your fingers into the bottom of your feet if that's there for you too. Or you can wring your foot out like a towel. Okay, and then we'll switch sides. Same thing on this side, either working the upper leg, knee to hip, the lower leg, ankle to knee, or working the foot, by weaving your fingers through your toes, like you're shaking hands or holding hands with your foot, wiggling the toes back and forth, digging your fingers into the bottom of your foot or and or wringing your foot out like a towel. We have something like, let me see if I'm gonna, let me see if I can pull this anatomy fact out of my brain. I think we have about 33, no, 33 would it be right. I was going to say 33 joints in the foot, but it might be more like 30. I think we have 33 bones in the foot and uh, even more joints than that. Don't quote me on that. I got to I got to get my feet facts straight. <laughs> OK, so giving a rub, giving a twist. And then go ahead and relax. All right, coming a little bit more into some spinal movements here. So let's just start with a nice easy rotation, whether you're seated or standing with your arms twisting around you, opposite knuckles tap uh, the opposite side of the low back. So right knuckles tap the left and vice versa. Just swinging the arms around you. Make sure you give that low back a tap with your knuckles. It moves the kidneys a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then coming back to the center, both arms are gonna come up towards the sky. We'll leave hands facing forward and taking a nice articulating roll down to the floor. 
Take an inhale at the bottom and then exhale, come right back up. Inhale at the top. Get big, reach from your fingers if you can, and then exhale, roll down. Inhale at the bottom and exhale, roll up. Think of peeling your spine down and up as you move. Do one more. And if that's not there for you, that's totally fine. Just moving up and down through that roll. And then coming all the way up. Hands will come behind you, interlace the fingers if you're able to, and open the chest. Okay, good. We'll bring uh, left arm up to the ceiling. Go ahead and just come into a side bend. I'm gonna have your right hand rest on your right, or am I saying this right? I'm sorry, right hand rest on your left knee. So stay in that side bend or your left hip. Yeah, if you're standing, that hand can be on the hip. Stay in that side bend, breathe into the open ribs, and then switch. Side bending to your left. Your right hand is gonna, I'm sorry, your left hand is gonna come to your right hip or your right knee. Mm -hmm. So it's just that opposite hand coming to that opposite knee. Good, and then switch. Side bending to your right. Right hand comes to the opposite knee or hip. And again, side bend, hand comes to opposite knee. Okay, I'm gonna layer on with that. Side bend again, so now we're side bending to the right. And using that hand pulling into that hip, I want you to open your ribs up towards the sky. So you're in a side bended, extended position. Yes, that looks great. Like you're almost looking up at the stars and then come back to the center and switch. That looks really nice, everybody. Side bend, use that hand pulling into that hip or thigh, twist up towards the sky, inhale. Can you still breathe here? That's the trick and back to the center. Side bend, twist up, inhale and exhale center. Side bend, twist up, Inhale, exhale, center. Again, side bend and twist. Yeah, and center. Side bend and twist. Keep moving through that one. I want you to focus on the inhale when you're in that fully twisted position. Inhaling into the open ribs. Yeah, I'm just gonna watch people do this one. Use that hand pulling into your thigh or your knee to help you, to really help you open and twist, if that's there for you. There we go, there we go, nice everybody. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, just maybe do one more. <laughs> Diana, I asked Siri how many bones in the foot and, and Siri answered 26? Darn it, come on Siri. Really thought it was 33. I wonder if they're including some of the bones. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll look into that. I'll look into that. That's really funny. <laughs> okay, arms come out towards your side. And then you're gonna find that rib translation to your right and to your left. So remember, you're trying to keep the ribs and the shoulders parallel with the floor as you glide right to left. And I want it to be kind of quick today, right? and left and right and left. And can you keep just a, a smooth breath as you do that? Maybe inhaling for a few glides and exhaling for a few glides. Okay, we're gonna layer on with that one. So we're gonna take a break. I'm gonna have you grab your two pencils. We'll come into a little bit of visual work. Two pencils, or you can use your thumbs if that's easier for you. Uh, arms are going to be out at your side into a T. Um, for my folks that are blind or visually impaired, bear with me and I'm just going to give you something slightly different than this one. Okay, so I want you to find that same rib glide, that same translation to your left, and look at that the tip of the left pencil. I'm going to have you do the near far uh, work. So looking from the tip of the pencil to the wall behind it, tip of the pencil to the wall, tip of the pencil wall, 
tip of the pencil wall. So there and back four times, shift back to the center. Yep. Shift to your right, do the same thing on this side. Look tip of the pencil wall, tip of the pencil wall. You do that four times back and forth and then go right into your other side. Near, far, near, far, near, far, near, far, and switch. Near, far, near, far, near, far, near, far, and switch. For folks that are blind or visually impaired, I'm gonna have you doing uh, the same movement with your head and your body. So as you, <clears throat> excuse me, as you shift to your, uh, let's see, as you shift to your left, you're looking to the left pencil. As you shift right, you look to the right pencil. So you're doing the same movement with your head and your neck, but for you all, I want it to be quick so that your head and neck is adjusting really quickly as you glide back and forth. You quickly look one way, you quickly look the other way, quickly look one way, quickly look the other way. Yeah, that second explanation was just for folks that are blind or visually impaired. Everyone else is doing the near, far, near, far. Yeah, yeah, I'm just watching people here. Maybe do one or two more each side. Notice if one side is harder for you. For your eyes, I should say for your eyes. Yeah, and your body. Do those two go hand in hand? Is the side where it's hard for you to side bend to, is that also the side where your eyes are having a hard time doing near, far, near, far? Okay, go ahead and relax. Sorry, I'm gonna have you hold on to the pencils. I put mine down. Okay, you're gonna bring one pencil up, one pencil down. Uh, maybe so they're, those pencils are about three feet apart from each other or so. Okay, if you're wearing glasses, and if you're able to take your glasses off where you can still see the pencils clearly, then take your glasses off. Um, otherwise, don't worry about the don't worry about the glasses. Okay, so just your eyes are going to be moving from top pencil to bottom pencil as quickly as you can. Just the eyes move. The head stays really steady. Uh, really steady. You're only going to switch to the next pencil when you can get that laser focus. So laser focus on one pencil, laser focus on the other, and then you try to go as quick as you can. For folks that are blind or visually impaired, don't worry about the pencils out in front of you. You're just going to be doing a head, a quick head nod up and down. Okay, so just working you more in the up down direction. Mm -hmm. Let everything move with you. If you get dizzy, uh, go ahead and stop and take a break because this works more of your vestibular system. Yeah, just watching people here. And if it's hard for you to hold the pencils for your shoulders, you can use objects in the room to look at as well. Okay, do five or 10 more jumps on each side. Yeah, and then go ahead and relax. Okay, great. One more here. Pencils are uh, at eye level. Um, eye level, same thing about like two to three feet apart from each other and finding the darting of your eyes left to right, left to right. Keeping your head straight forward. Just the eyes move, the head stays steady. For folks that are blind or visually impaired, you're gonna be shaking your head side to side quickly. Maybe, um, maybe if you're doing that version, only do 30-ish. Pause, check in with your body, check in with your dizziness and take a break if you need to. And then noticing, is it harder for you to look to one side than the other? Maybe when you look one way, it takes your eyes just a mill of a second longer to focus as opposed to the other direction. Yeah, do 10 more jumps both ways or take a break if you're feeling, <laughs> if your eyes are feeling like they're donezo. <laughs> Good, okay, when you've done those 10, you can put the pencils down. 
Let's just give the body a quick, quick reset. So you're gonna give yourself a big hug. Uh, go ahead and rotate, looking over your left shoulder. And then rotate, looking over your right shoulder. Rotate, look over left. Rotate, look over right. Okay, this time, rotate, look over your left. Poke your tongue into the left side of your cheek. What's the farthest thing to the left that you can see behind you? For standing athletes, if you wanna do this balancing on one foot, you can do this too. So poking the tongue into the cheek, yeah, straining your eyes and then switch. Rotating the other way, poking the tongue into your right cheek, eyes go to the right. And then switch, mm -hmm. rotate, poke the tongue and look. Rotate, poke the tongue and look. Rotate, poke, look. Rotate, poke and look. We're gonna move a little faster. Rotate, poke and look up. So up and behind you. Rotate, poke and look up behind you. Uh-huh, rotate, poke, look up. Rotate, poke, look up. Rotate, poke, look down. Rotate, poke, look down. Like, can you see what's on the floor right behind your chair or right behind your body? Rotate, poke, and look. Rotate, poke, and look. Yeah, bear with me. You got one more each side. Rotate, poke, and look. Rotate, poke, and look. Good. Release that, shake everything out. Okay, a lot of eye work. Let's grab your letter ball or your ball shaped object of some sort. Okay, so for those of you that have been playing with me for a while, uh, go ahead and go straight into playing letter ball, however you like to play it, whether you're moving it around your body or you're playing catch with yourself or bouncing it off of the floor. Um, for folks that are new, I'm just going to walk you through this and then I'm going to layer on. So holding the ball into your chest, you're going to move it away from your body at any angle you want to pull it away from. Quickly look at the ball, say the first letter or number that you see, pull it back into your chest. Pull it away from your chest at a different angle around your body. Look at it, say the first letter number you see, pull it back in. So you're just gonna repeat pulling that ball away from you at a different angle each time, up above, down low. Quickly saying the first letter or number that you see. So your eyes are having to target something really precise as you move your body. Mm -hmm. You can play catch with yourself if you're able to play catch, or you can throw the ball with someone in your house or off of the floor or off of a wall. Okay, keep playing. I'm going to layer on. So when you catch a, uh, let's go, when you catch a letter, you're going to lift, yeah, letter, let's do the right side. When you catch a letter, lift the right side of your body. So that could be a shoulder shrug, that could be an arm raise, or that can be a knee raise, whether you're seated or standing. When you get a number, did I just say that right? Letter, lift, oh yeah, yeah, because I'm, let me mirror you. So letter, you're gonna lift the right side of your body. Number, you're gonna lift left. Letter, right, number, left, okay? So go back to playing letter ball. Lifting either your arm, your knee, or doing a shoulder shrug. whether you catch a number or a letter. So what we're doing with this right now is we're just bringing something called brain speed games more into the mix. 
where you have to make a decision and then act on it really quickly. So I want you to do it as quick as you can. You see the letter and then do it as quick as you can. Is it the right or the left side of your body that you need to move? You're trying to make that decision really quick and really sharp. Yeah. Oopsies. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna layer on one more time. You can take this or leave it. When you catch an odd number, look to your left. You're still moving that side of your body, but when you see an odd number, look left. When you see an even number, look right. Odd number, look left. Even number, look right. So it's just a quick turn of the head and then keep playing. Only for the numbers though. A letter, you're lifting the right side of your body. Number, you're lifting the left side of your body. Odd number, you look left. Even number, you look right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, everybody. Maybe just do five or so more ball moves. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, when you've done those five, We'll put the ball down. Actually, I'm going to leave that pencil there for a sec. Okay, we'll bring arms up to the ceiling, really reaching up, up, up. Think of expanding your rib cage like you're really trying to reach that thing above you. And then exhale, unshrug your shoulders, just from your shoulders. Yeah, and think of connecting your ribs back down so we're not flaring the ribs anymore. Good, and then inhale, reach up, let everything lift and flare and get wide. And then unshrug, pull the ribs back down. Yep, lift the shoulders, lift the ribs. Unshrug the shoulders, pull the ribs down. Good, we're gonna leave the arms up. Reach and lift and unshrug ribs together. Lift, reach, unshrug together. Yep, a little bit quicker. Lift and reach, unshrug. Lift, reach, unshrug. Go for five, for four, that's it. Three, two, and one. And then bring that right into a roll all the way down to the ground. Try to round your spine as much as you can here. Take an inhale at the bottom and then exhale, roll yourself back up. Good, and arms come down. We're just gonna do one more quick thing. Go ahead and grab your pencil here. I'm just gonna have you find pencil push-ups with your eyes. So if you know what you're doing, go ahead and go right into it. Otherwise, holding the tip of the pencil arms distance away from you with that tip right in between your eyes. You're slowly gonna pull that pencil in towards your eyes. The second that you start to see two pencils, you're gonna pull it back away from your eyes. Pull it into your eyes when you start to see two pencils, pull it away from your eyes. Start with that. For those of you that know that you have um, really significantly a more dominant eye, and you know who you are because I've talked to a few of you about this, feel free to close one of your eyes with one hand. So I'm blocking my hand over one of my eyes and I'm gonna do pencil push-ups just with one eye. Kind of my, my weaker, my less dominant eye, if you know which one that is for you. For folks that are blind or visually impaired, yeah, and awesome. Yeah, Julie, I see you going into that. You can either do um, full circles, Julie, just like you're doing, or you can cross arms over the chest and bring your whole body into more of a circular movement, bringing your head and your eyes with you. Again, working more of the vestibular system here. If you're standing and or if you're able to, I'm going to have you just bring that right into a spinning rotation, either in your chair or standing. Make sure you do an even number 
in both directions. What if I don't see a double? Then that's, then that's really good. Yeah, if you don't see a double, so the challenge you can add on with that, if you don't see a double, continue to do the pencil push-ups and slowly start, if you're, yeah, so Anya, for you, if you can slowly start to move your body in a circle, so just spinning as you do the pencil push-ups, for folks that are seated, you're just going to be moving your head around, looking up, looking down, tilting your head. So you're just moving your head as you do the pencil push-ups. And I know I've been talking a lot, so you probably have done at least 100 repetitions by now. Just do a few more. And then go ahead and take a break. <laughs> okay, good. All right, go ahead and relax. You can put the pencil down. Let's bring both arms up to the ceiling. Crossing the arms over the head, so like you're framing your head with your arms. If that's not there for you, you can also uh, cross the arms over the chest. And I want you to side bend to your left. <sighs> side, side bend to your right. Come back to the center. Go ahead and point that chest up towards the ceiling. And then find a roll down. Don't go all the way down, just about halfway down. And then back to the center. Side bend left. One more time through. Side bend right. Lift up towards the sky. Curl down towards the ground. Back to the center. Release the arms. Okay, good. We'll find a still point with the body here. So go ahead and close your eyes. First, just feeling your body being supported by the chair or by the ground. And then finding that same body scan, scanning down the back side of your body all the way from your head to your toes, down the back of your neck, upper, mid, and lower back. Can you sense those areas down through your hips, backs of your legs, backs of your calves, maybe even the bottom of your feet? Go ahead and think of one thing you're grateful for today. We'll take one more inhale, one more exhale, and we'll open the eyes. All right. Thank you so much for joining today, everybody. I'm just going to scoot in here. Cool. Um, uh, announcements, announcements. Yes, uh, another big thank you to Move United for continuing to sponsor these classes. Um, as always, if you are feeling generous, um, these classes are offered for free, but if you'd like to make a donation, any, any amount and all amounts are more than welcome. Um, either, or either Cynthia or Sarah John will post that down into the chat 